The Crashing Waves, written by Textures of the Changing Seasons and read by Lala's Podfix. Summary. They were coming for him. They were hungry and they were coming for him. He stumbled against the tree and slid down to the ground, all composure lost. There was a swirl of white in front of him that he couldn't make sense of. Maybe it was the dogs. Teenage Wei Wushen has a run-in with some dogs and Lan Wanji helps him through the ensuing panic attack. Content Warnings. This fic is about Wei Wushen having a panic attack. There are references to his childhood trauma with dogs. With all the centering exercises, all the mental discipline and sword forms he practiced daily, and his reputation as one of the most talented young cultivators of his generation, you'd think that Wei Wushen would have overcome his fear of dogs. He had not. Wei Wushen was walking with the rest of the juniors, double file through the woods towards a village that had reported a number of strange happenings when the baying of dogs began in the distance behind them. He had been looking forward to the night hunt, something that had purpose and required action, so much better than all the droning on about rules. How was he supposed to sit still through all of that? He had been assigned copying almost every day for some infraction or another, finally earning a kind but pointed suggestion from Shiji to be more respectful of their hosts. He was much better at hunting and fighting than sitting still, so he figured this was a good chance to turn things around. Before they departed for the night hunt, he had confidently promised Shiji that he would neither cause trouble nor make a scene. But when he heard the bang, he felt the first sharp flash of familiar fear and realized he might have trouble keeping his promise. He took a deep breath, trying to slow his sudden racing heart. Dogs. He hated dogs. La Jean glanced over at him. They had been paired up for the hunt by the seniors with the suggestion that Wei Wushen would do well to learn something from Hong Guanjun's poise, composure, and perfect manners. Wushen had kept himself from rolling his eyes, but only barely. La Jean's stony expression showed pure disinterest, but the movement itself was more curiosity than Wei Wushen had seen from the uptight fuddy-duddy all week. Had he noticed something was wrong? He focused on slowing his breathing. He had to act natural. Was the baying getting louder? They had passed a village an hour ago. He made a brief but fervent wish that the dogs would head in that direction, further away. He could feel the breath starting to hitch in his throat, and his heartbeat fluttered and sped like a rabbit's. He laughed nervously and shot a strange smile at Lan Waji, who stared straight ahead. This was not the time to faint or dissolve into a quivering puddle of terror, but his usual alternative, making a joke of his fear and then running away while everyone was distracted by his antics, would almost certainly be considered making a scene, especially since they had been specifically instructed to walk quietly and respectfully. He thought despairingly about his promise to Shijie that he would behave and grimaced. Shiji had been kinder, but Zhang Cheng was right that his recent actions reflected badly on Yun Meng Zhang. He had sworn to himself that he would behave better. He really did owe it to the clan that had taken him in. His anxiety ratcheted higher, and he glanced around for a way out. Keep it together fought in his head with not again, not now. The dogs were definitely not headed back toward the village. In fact, it sounded like they were chasing something toward them, just on the other side of the small ridge that ran on the right of the path. The chasing suggested something larger than a rabbit. Maybe a deer? Between focusing on his breathing and being unable to ignore the sound of the dogs, Wei Wushan almost missed it when La Jean stumbled slightly. The lid of his water jar popped off and rolled into the grass beside the path. Apparently unfazed, Lan Wanji gestured sharply with his chin, indicating to Wu Shen that they should move aside while he retrieved it. They had been walking near the end of the line, so the last pairs of visiting young cultivators passed them immediately, at least one utterly failing to hide his surprise at Hang Guanjun's false step. Wei Wu Shen moved off the path and walked over to lean against a large tree, doing his best imitation of his usual relaxed slouch. He suspected it was not very convincing. 
But then one of the dogs gave an actual howl, and his attempt at bravado was over. The fear flooded him, and he swayed. When the unmistakable sound of dogs taking down large prey carried over the ridge, his legs gave out, childhood memories overtaking him. They were coming for him. They were hungry, and they were coming for him. He stumbled against a tree and slid down to the ground, all composure lost. There was a swirl of white in front of him that he couldn't make sense of. Maybe it was the dogs. He knew from experience that they would go for the soft bits first. He curled up defensively, knees to his chest and arms over his head to protect his face, neck, and belly. One of his raised hands still clutched Soybien, white-knuckled around the sheath. He could hear the frightened, gasping sounds he was making, but they felt so inevitable that he almost didn't feel ashamed, except that he had promised, and La Wanji, the impeccable, esteemable Hong Wanjun, was right there to witness his meltdown. How humiliating! Shiji would be so disappointed. Wei Wu Shen. Was that Lan Zhan? Wei Wu Shen, is it the dogs you fear? He whimpered at the word dogs. Definitely Lan Zhan. Hadn't he been on the other side of the tree a moment ago? They can't reach you. The words couldn't penetrate the fog of his fear, but the tone was steady. Wei Ying, you are safe. Wei Wu Shen quieted slightly as he tried to listen. Wei Ying, hmm. He did his best to focus on what Lan Zhan was saying. Lan Wanji didn't talk much, so whatever he was saying was probably important for their survival. How many bridges are there in Lotus Pier? What? What did that have to do with anything? How many bridges? He gasped. Hmm. Yes. How many bridges are there in Lotus Pier? Wu Shen shook his head a little. What on earth? He must be going crazy. Was he hallucinating? That had happened once. Lan Zhang kept talking. I visited when I was small. There was a bridge between the dock and the primary gate. How many others? Between his confusion and the familiar image of Lotus Pier's beautiful carved gate that Lan Zhang's words called up, the fear retreated. Slightly. I, well, two more on the way to the main hall, he started baffled. He peeked out from between his arms. Lan Zhang was standing with his back to Wei Wuxian in the tree, facing towards the bang, hand on Beechen's hilt, textbook defensive position. Of course, he almost rolled his eyes. Everything Lan Wanji did was textbook. Then, what he was seeing began to register. Lan Wanji wasn't being his usual judgy self. He wasn't angry or frustrated. He wasn't even staring. He was defending him. Wei Wuxian could still feel the blood and adrenaline pumping through him, like he'd been sparring hard, and his breathing was still fast and shallow, but he was gasping less. Wei Wuxian. Lan Zhan again. Did he ever stop talking? The incongruity of the thought startled a hoarse laugh out of him. The dogs are leaving. Do you hear? Oh, he was right. They stopped baying, and they must be following the hunters back toward the village. He could hear them yipping as they got further away, probably proud of themselves, the awful creatures. He managed a shaky breath and then another. Wei Wu Shen, are you well? Yes. No. <sighs> he gasped a slightly deeper breath, sat up another fraction, and shook his head. I suppose I will be. Ugh, oh, those memories. Oops. Well, that was more honest than he usually was about these things. La Jean slowly released Beechen's hilt and turned toward him. He lowered himself gracefully onto a log across from Wu Shen. Wei Wu Shen looked for a way to deflect attention from his almost admission. What were you doing over there? Defending me? La Zhang glared at him briefly. Mm. What is the 309th rule of Gusu Lan sect? Wei Wu Shen groaned, then took a break to breathe for a moment. Rules? What is it with you and rules? La Zhang stared at him. I don't remember. I've only copied them 400 times. Is it the one about being courageous? Or, I don't know, not disgracing yourself in battle? Thanks. I'll keep that in mind for next time. Ah, there it was. The wash of shame that set in as soon as the fear subsided enough that he could think again. He let out a sour laugh. Lan Zhan stared at him some more. Protect those in danger. Oh. Perched on a log, probably getting his perfect white robes all dusty, Lan Zhang closed his eyes and took a deep breath, then another. Wei Wuxian soon recognized a familiar meditation breathing exercise, and his own breathing began to settle into the same pattern. The fear faded further still. 
Almost gone now. After a few more minutes, Wu Shen's heart rate had steadied, the sweat on his face had dried, and he sagged back against the tree, head tipped back, eyes closed, utterly exhausted. He heard Long Zhang stir. He should say something. Did you find the cap to your water? Ugh, how inane. Where did that come from? Wasn't he supposed to be a smooth talker, deflecting attention from the fact that he was a disaster? Mm, that must be yes. We must rejoin the group, Long Zhang said quietly, after a few more moments. Wei Wu Shen let out a deep sigh. Yeah, I guess we should. Eyes still closed, Wei Wu Shen scrunched up his face and made himself ask, Are you going to tell the seniors what happened? I mean, I know lying is prohibited, but I really didn't cause any trouble. Not really. And Lan Chi Ren. He trailed off. He heard Lan Zhang rise. Rule 92. Speak not of others' weaknesses. Almost painfully relieved, he started to push himself to his feet. But when he opened his eyes, Lan Zhang's hand was right in front of him. He shrugged and grabbed it, hauling himself up. Lan Zhang made an odd noise that he didn't have the energy to analyze. What? It was right there. He brushed off his robes, Lan Zhang's were somehow still pristine, and cast around to see if he had dropped anything important. It didn't look like it. They moved back to the path and set off. Well, if you're not going to say what really happened, I guess we'll have to come up with some other story. They set a pace that should let them overtake the others before too much time had passed. He did his best to summon some energy, shaking his head. Wow, so lucky for me that you dropped something. And they say Hang Wan Jun has perfect poise. But it means no one saw, so we can make up whatever story we want. Let's see. How long were we gone? Maybe we were waylaid by bandits. We found a Yao Guai and defeated it by ourselves. He threw out wilder and wilder ideas, trying to focus on anything except what had just happened and how utterly mortifying it was going to feel to think back on losing control like that in front of the flawless Lan Wanji. I know! You fainted, and I had to guard you until you awoke! He struck a theatrical pose, since it sounded like something from a play. Lan Zhan stared straight ahead and lengthened his already long stride. Eh, you're right. Not very believable. Wei Wushen started taking one and a half steps to every one of Lan Zhang's, his usual skip beginning to return. Oh, or maybe you ran into some pretty girls from the last village and lost time because you wouldn't stop flirting with them. Lan Zhang's eyebrows did something almost certainly a grimace. Or maybe... Lan Wanji let Wei Wushen's chatter wash over him, while he tried not to think about why he had moved so quickly to take a defensive position against dogs that had never even crossed to their side of the hill. But it was a long time before he could banish from his head the image of Wei Wushen, the strong, carefree, young warrior, quavering and afraid. The End This has been... The Crashing Waves, written by Textures of the Changing Seasons and read by Lawless Potfix. If you enjoyed listening to this story, please go to archive of our own slash works slash 392-592-87 to leave comments and kudos for the original author. I hope you enjoyed listening and have a great rest of your day.